Has your weight stalled for the last little bit and is the scale no longer moving downwards? Well, if it has, you've come to the right place because in today's video, I'm gonna guide you through step-by-step step on what you need to do if you hit a weight loss plateau. Hey, what's going on everyone? And welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going over what to do when you hit a weight loss plateau. And if you are new to my videos, my name's Aaron. I'm an online fat loss coach and I put out one video a week currently, hopefully in the future, maybe two. And if you wanna keep getting updates for these kind of videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. So if you are currently in a bit of a plateau and the scale isn't moving, I'm gonna guide you through four steps that I want you to go through if you feel like you're in a plateau right now. So let's get into today's video. So number one, the first thing I want you to do is don't panic. It's perfectly okay if you hit a plateau. It happens to everybody, no matter how perfectly things are going and no matter how perfect your diet is or your training is or your overall program, it's bound to happen to everybody at some point. So it is perfectly normal. So don't do anything drastic and don't freak out. And during this time, there's a couple things you can do. The first one in this first step is to actually make sure you've been in a plateau a good amount of time. If your weight has only stalled for like three days, you're not in a plateau. I would say give it at least an honest seven, maybe 14 days. So at least one to two weeks, maybe about 10 days on average. So if you've stayed the same weight for 10 days, then it's very possible you could be in a plateau. The reason why you don't just want to assume you're in a plateau after one week is because sometimes the scale does fluctuate and there will be weeks where you are up and down a week due to numerous reasons. So give it some time. I would say give it a max of two weeks. And if nothing is happening at that point, then you could be in a plateau. Then the second part of this first step is I want you to actually look back on what you've been doing. So go over your training program and go over your diet and your food tracking, everything you've been doing, and even like your sleep and your stress, and see if there's any areas of improvement. Oftentimes when you hit a plateau, it could be as simple as getting an extra hour of sleep or maybe you've been really stressed because of a work situation and you just haven't been able to lose weight because of that. Sometimes that is the reason and you may not have to make diet changes or activity changes. It may just be going to bed earlier. So go over at least the past month or so of your training, your lifestyle, your daily routine and see if there's any areas where you can improve and that could easily get you out of your plateau. So the next thing, moving on to number two, that you can do after you've gone over everything in your life that possibly could be slowing you down is increasing your activity level. Sometimes it can just be a matter of doing a little bit more on a daily basis. So you may notice if you could easily fit in like a half hour walk somewhere or get an extra workout in or take the stairs at work. It doesn't have to be anything big, but at that time when you're going over your past month of training, nutrition, all of that, see if there's areas of opportunity where you can get a little extra activity. And in this case, a little bit, like let's say a 10, 20 minute walk a couple days a week can go a very long way. And that could be the difference to put you in a deficit and allow the scale to continue going down. Now I put this step before cutting calories because when you're dieting, you want to make sure you're actually eating enough food. Number one, to support your activity level, everything that you're doing, make sure you get the right nutrients that you, your body actually needs. Also, nobody likes eating less food. That's never a fun thing. You wanna be able to eat as much as you can. You wanna feel good, um, enjoy the foods that you're eating without feeling kind of miserable that you're eating so little food. So try to increase your activity level first, as long as it's, you know, you're not doing crazy hit workouts seven days a week or something like that. There's always an area somewhere, most likely for most people. So go over your activity and increase where you might be able to. So if you've gone through step one and step two, and there's no lifestyle factors you can change 
or you can't really increase your activity level or maybe too difficult to, the next step or the next thing you can focus on is reducing your calories. Now, when it comes to this, you do not want to make really big cuts. It's usually something very small. So it could be as small as 100 calories a day. So for example, if you're getting 1900 calories a day on average, then you would go down to 1800 calories a day on average. When you have your new lower calorie target, stick with it for at least a week, a week and a half and see how that goes. Don't base that new, the results of that new calorie goal based off like a couple of days. Because as I mentioned in the start of the video, your weight does fluctuate and there will be daily fluctuations and sometimes there are weekly fluctuations. So the best thing you can do is give it some time. You do have to be patient in this process. So lower your calories by a little bit, usually 100 per day is just fine. I wouldn't recommend any more because you don't want to cut more than what you need. And then at the end of, let's say, give it 10 days, the scale will most likely go down. Along with reducing your calories a little bit, if you have lost a good chunk of weight, let's say you've lost like 20 pounds and then you hit a plateau, you could be at a point where you just need to readjust your calories because as you get smaller, you require less energy and less calories. So you could be at a point where you needed that number of calories to lose weight at let's say 200 pounds, but now you're 180 pounds, you need a completely different calorie range in order to lose weight. So you could be at a point where you need to readjust your calories and your nutrient intake. And if you wanna learn how to do that, I'll link my, I forget which side it is um, in my camera. <laughs> Um, I'll link my calorie guide video so you can learn how to calculate your calories and I'll link my macro video below as well so you can calculate your macros accurately. So moving on to the last one, number four, if you have gone through all of the above, lifestyle changes, activity changes, reducing your calories and nothing is happening, then you might be in a position where you just need a break from your diet. When you diet for an extended period of time, it can be a little hard on your body. So if you're in an extended plateau, let's say like a month or something, and you've gone through all the previous things, nothing is changing, then you're probably in a position where you need to slowly go back up to maintenance calories, stay there for at least two weeks, at most one month, but usually two weeks is good, and then go back to the dieting process. So you want to recalculate your maintenance calories at that new weight that you're at right now. Slowly increase your calories until you're there. I would say about 100 a week. So let's say if, if you're at uh, like 1900, then week one, 1900, then 2000, then 2100, until you reach your maintenance calories. Take it slow, stay at maintenance for about two weeks, up to a max of a month, and then slowly reduce your calories back down to a deficit so you can lose some weight. And honestly, sometimes that's all you need. I know taking a diet break mentally isn't always a fun thing to do. The scale may go up a little bit. You're, it's unlikely that you're gaining any fat in this period. You're, you're just retaining more water, storing more glucose in this process. But there are some times, just like in life, you have to take a couple steps back if you want to take even more steps forwards. So if you've been stuck in a plateau for a while and you're just really beating your head against a wall, it is time for a break. Take it easy on yourself. It's okay. Everybody has to do this at some point. Give yourself a break, go up to maintenance for a bit, and then restart your diet after. So I hope you found those tips useful. Make sure whenever you hit a plateau, you give it some time and actually make sure and be sure that you are actually in a plateau and then go through those four steps. Go over all of your lifestyle factors. If there's like sleep or stress, whatever it may need to be, there's always something that can be improved. Then after that, go over your activity and see if there's any areas of opportunity where you can get a little more exercise in. Then once you've done that, make some diet changes, reduce your calories by a little bit, around 100 per day, and see where that takes you. If you've tried all of the above for a good amount of time and nothing is happening, then don't freak out. It's 100% okay. Give yourself a break. Take a diet break, go back up to maintenance, and chill out there for a little bit, and then restart your diet. 
If you do want to learn more about reverse dieting and that process of going back up to maintenance calories and then dieting again, leave a comment down below if you're interested and I will make a video on that for you. So thanks for watching today's video. I hope you found it helpful and useful if you are currently in a plateau. So make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time.